Okay, so now that my new pilot bushing is in, I want to make sure to put plenty of grease back inside of there. But you don't want it squirting out all over because it's going to squirt all over on the back of your clutch and your flywheel, I should say. So you want to get some in there, but don't get too crazy. Wipe out any excess that you have. Make sure your hands are good and clean. Wipe down the area where the flywheel is going to mount and the back of the flywheel. Make sure the front of the flywheel, using a new rag, make sure that it's grease free. We will uh, wipe that down one more time before we put the clutch on. Now realize this can only go on in one direction, so you've got your six threaded holes, one, two, three, four, five, six. You've got one hole that is not threaded. So the one hole that is not threaded goes in the same spot where this hole is right here. So I have to rotate a little bit here. And then I can lift this up and set it in place. Rotate a little bit and there it is. Just like everything else we've done, when we go to torque this. They're torqued 60 foot-pounds and just like putting a wheel on your car you want to use a cross crisscross pattern. So start on one side, go to the opposite side 180 degrees away, then go 180 degrees from that one, 180 degrees, keep on going till they're all tight then you can make a circular pattern for your last pattern for verifying where they are. So like everything else I've done, I'm going to bring them all up snug before we start doing any kind of torquing procedure. Now realize, with these heads are very short on flywheel bolts. So, you know, you could cut a socket off. Just watch. You want to use a six-point socket because you don't want to end up slipping off of them. And you want a socket that has a, a fairly flush edge so you don't have too much taper going back in here because the bolts are so short you're going to have issues otherwise. And if you end up screwing the heads up on these bolts, then you get to start over. So now before I go any further and the, start tightening the bolting up on the flywheel and torquing, I will install this little plate that I made. It's a little angle, just a piece of eighth inch angle and a bolt and we will slide that into position in the flywheel to keep the flywheel from turning while we're torquing. Because we're torquing up to 60 foot pounds and that's way more than a person can hold back and if you're working by yourself it's even worse so we'll put that in position tighten it in there so now we will move into torquing we'll do it in three increments I'm set for 20 foot pounds and we'll do it in a crisscross pattern as I said earlier And you want to put pressure on the back of here, make sure you hold it on straight, as I said earlier, so that you don't end up twisting the head off. And ruining your flywheel bolts. So there we're at 20. Now we'll go up to 40.
that's 40. Now we'll go up to our final torque of 60, which is what Chevrolet calls out for on the flywheel. I'll go back around once more. Okay, everything looks good and is torqued to 60 foot pounds. Okay, so I already unwrapped the clutch disc. I have my alignment tool here. I've got a fresh clean rag, so I want to go on first, again, wipe down my face of my flywheel so that I know there's no grease or oil on there. Then I'm going to open up my new pressure plate, take the packaging off, and just like on uh, when you buy new rotors for your brakes, this is going to be covered with a light film that needs to be cleaned off. A light film of oil or something like that that needs to be cleaned off prior to putting this together. Always make sure that you got all your bolts and stuff ready to go. All mine are right here. Bring them over closer so that I have them next to me. Set it against your leg or whatever. This goes together with the raised portion in towards the pressure plate. And then you can get ready with your bolting and slide your pilot shaft tool into place, kind of bring it up, hold it there, and get a bolt started, and then just basically work your way around, this has no special direction that it goes in uh, as compared to the flywheel. your bolting all started again as usual and then work your clutch up and down until you can fit your tool in there make sure you're not too tight if it's too tight back a couple bolts off so that you can uh, move that clutch up and down with the tool and with your fingers so that you get that tool to go all the way inside right now the grease inside is pushing the tool out but it fits in real nice so once you get it so that everything's good to go your alignment tool slides in and out easily you can see that the edge of the clutch all the way around is pretty much even with the pressure plate and then you can go in and bring all of these bolts up bring them up snug because you're going to be actually pulling against the springs in the pressure plate 
when you tighten this. So you want to bring it up square and straight just like we've done everything else. So once again, you want to work on opposites. Crisscross pattern. Bring it up slowly and evenly. Just kind of watch as you're going around it so that everything is coming up nice and square. Every now and again you can check your alignment tool. Make sure that it still slides in and out nicely. Again, there's not a lot of room in these also, just like the flywheel bolting. So you've got to make sure that you don't slip off the head and wreck a bolt. Make sure your tool gets all the way on where it needs to be. Once you're bolting, it is all snugged up tight. Now you're ready to go on and torque these. And we're going to start out, I still have my locking tool on here. We're going to start out at 20. I'm going to take these up to 40 foot-pounds and that's going to be my torque. So I'm only going to go up in two increments but then I'll run back around them just to verify again. Don't just use any bolts in these. If you wreck a bolt, you've got to go on and buy bolts right directly. Forgot where it was. From either a manufacturer or order them through Summit or Jags. Any one of those, you got to use hardened bolt on these, similar to what's on for rod bolts. So you really want to use, buy a kit through Milladon or Moroso or something like that. Okay, so everything's torqued to 40 foot-pounds now. My shaft goes in and out very smoothly. That means everything's lined up and the engine is ready to be installed. Whatever you do, don't forget to put your new straw bearing on your transmission on the fork before you uh, start installing the engine. Do not put a used one in. It's, uh, you've got to pull the engine to replace it, so you don't want to put a used one in and take a chance. 